Uh, g'day viewers, um, I've been fielding a, a lot of questions about the um, system that was fitted in the Nissan Patrol four wheel drive, uh, particularly from the 12 litre per minute video and other videos. So people want to know how the uh, circuit, how everything's wired up, what the circuit looks like, how did I do it, okay so we're going to go through it right now. Um, I've been a bit lazy making videos but uh, the questions need to be answered so here we go. Um, let's start with the alternator. I'm going to just... Um, there's a centre connection. It's basically a three phase alternator like all car alternators are. Okay from here um, you, you should refer to the the video I made on modifying the alternator. How we take the voltage regulator out of the system and um, and how that's created. Okay, so here we go. There's um, we move into the diodes, the diode box. I'm just thinking the best way to draw this. Um, let's just do it this way. Okay, so the diode blocks in the alternator remain because we want DC for the electrolysis process. So this part of the alternator isn't really modified. It's, it's the output, the stator. Um, the stator part that doesn't move in the alternator goes straight into diodes for rectification to DC because this is um, generating AC in the, the three phases. Some alternators are a delta wound alternator. This is called a star wound which is probably more common. Okay so from there so the connection points we normally mark like that just means they're connected as is that centre. From there you can see well okay the diode's like a check valve so as we generate voltage in these coils it can only flow out, it can't can't come back and the return path is this way. So you, we're normally generating a voltage through two coils at any time. Um, so that's going to be negative and it's going to be positive. Simple. The rotating rotor, which is the field, coil which in, is creating the, rotate, the rotating magnetic field from this coil rotating past the pole pieces is creating this voltage. Probably, you should probably know that already. Um, those are some slip rings permanently connected like that. And um, the slip rings have brushes, so I'll just mark them as an arrow. They're the brushes contacting the, the slip rings. We'll bring them out. And this is where the main part of the, modifi the modified alternator. Refer to the video, I'll put a link at the bottom of the video. Um, we remove the voltage regulator. Normally there's a voltage regulator right here. Controls. As you increase the voltage in the coil, the mag magnetism is increased so you get more voltage output from the alternator. So that's how they normally control the alternator output to 12 volts. We remove all that, we don't want that. We want to make, um, like, like we showed in the video, about 28 volts was good for my cell. The, the more voltage you have, the less current you need to have the equivalent um, power output. Okay, so what, what we had in mind, um, let's, let's put the cells over here. You're probably aware from watching the other video, I'll put the link on how the cell was made. Um, I had several concentric tubes in mind and there was seven of, seven of them in an array, all with several tubes, you know what I mean? But I'll, I'll depict it here just as one an outer tube 
which is the most outer tube, and an inner tube, which is the most inner tube. We'll, we'll just don't worry about the. Um, we'll call them like a neutral plate. The the other remaining tubes in between the inner and the outer are um, not shown here, and we don't need to show them for the purpose. So the positive straight down to the outer tube the negative well let's continue from here the inner tube connection the stainless steel inner tube the return to the alternator came through a metering shunt remember I had the meter you now the metering shunts are low resistance um, it drops a small amount of voltage across it. So the resistance that might be like 0 0.01 of an ohm, 10, 10 milli ohms. That's the path, positive through the cell, back through the meter shunt, and that's the return to the alternator. So it's going through those coils, up through that diode, through the cell, and back through that diode. Follow that path. Or it could be those those two coils or it could be these two coils. You can follow the path that works every time. Now the control of the rotor coil, the field. You might recall I advised um, using a pre-manufactured pulse, pulse width modulator. Um, and I used one from J-Car Electronics. It's commonly called a commonly called a DC motor speed controller, and it it can normally controls the speed of a DC motor by um, pulse width modulation, where where it, it alters the um, the DC pulse width, like so that's 50% pulse there, like on, off, and it continues on, on, off, on, off, on, off. Well, all of a sudden if you have a shorter pulse width like that, well, it's going to run slower because it's got less on time and, and as you go along, the average power going into your motor is less. If, if your on time is greater, if the on time is greater than the off time, well, the motor's going to go faster. You're putting out more power, more average power into the motor. So that's the output of the, the field now is controlled directly by this DC motor speed control. I'll put the link, um, my suggested one I got from a local electronic shop, uh, any, buy them online, they're everywhere, um, pulse width modulator, DC motor controllers, cheap, 20 bucks, probably get one that's the most current that the coil will normally um, consume, if it was on full, permanently 100% duty cycle would be about maybe 5 amps, so I suggest getting a a 10 amp or even a 20 amp rated speed controller. Not going to have any problems. Okay, um, I had that uh, meter you might recall in the car I got from eBay. It's a measures volts, current, power, um, amongst other things. So you can monitor what's going on. This is where the shunt comes into the into play. Um, you see now that small voltage created by the shunt. The meter, you haven't got high current wires coming out here for your your shunt because um, it's it's just a, 
a varying voltage now instead of a varying current because of the, it's a voltage drop across here. So um, yeah, let's join that on. Okay, um, I do believe straight from the positive it it also has a sense here so it can measure it like um, the output voltage across there and there like as well in, internally in the meter. It had a couple of buttons here to select the mode, you know, you might want to measure volts or current. I can't, well, actually I've got it here, we'll have a look at it in a minute. Okay, um, this motor speed control circuit, um, as it comes standard, it's got a, a potentiometer there to um, adjust the duty cycle. And it has an option, um, it's got a fixed frequency, this, this, this frequency from here to here um, is fixed, like the frequency, the, the how often the um, pulses are generated is fixed. Um, you, you can remove the resistor internally here and, and turn it in and fit a variable resistor. So then, then you've got the option of changing the frequency of the pulses as well as the pulse width. Um, and I'll, I'll show you that too. Um, so we end up with um, two variable controls coming out here on, on the um, control at the dash. So they're a variable um, resistor. Pretty lazy way of drawing it, but yeah, you get the idea. Um, variable resistors, one for the frequency, one for the duty cycle. Um, the power for this is taken, this, you, you got to realise this alternator isn't the car's alternator, this is a separate alternator dedicated to running the cell. The car's electrical system is, I'm not even talking about it here, um, the car's electrical system, um, let's just say the battery, it's got its own alternator and um, ground. So. Its power, um, coming straight from the positive light, through, through the fuse box, that's a, that's a fuse, um, yeah, straight into there, that's a positive. So that's the uh, output, this is the power in, um, now, well, Let's just say that's the earth. So you can see the plus and minus there from the normal car electrical system. Uh, well, I've missed something here. Uh, there's a relay. There's a there's a relay here. Um, It's controlled by the car's um, ignition switch from from the fuse box, like the the bus bar on the fuse box. It's from the ignition because your your switch is like off um, accessories, I think, on and start. So we use the the on part there. Um, so this isolates the system unless the engine is running. The car engine has to be on, it has to be running before anything happens. And look guys, that's about it. Um, it's pretty simple. Very simple. Here's the control box out of the car. Um, I've got a, oh, I've got a meter, um, a current meter here. Just in series with the, this positive and negative output, it can, it can go either way, it doesn't matter. Um, 
So that's that's that meter right there. This this multifunction meter is is that one right there. Here's the switches. The um, what's that? The duty cycle and the frequency. Uh, I've got a switch. Oh, okay. There's also an on-off switch here to turn the system off. So there's also a switch here. That's that on-off switch. You can turn the system off or on also. That's about it. Inside the box, you can see, um, okay, the two, the two potentiometers. Um, one already has provisions for the duty cycle. The other one to control the frequency here, I've removed like a, a resistor like that and fitted a, a plug. So instead of having a resistor here to, for the frequency, um, we've now got that variable resistor down there for um, potentiometer for changing the frequency. We can change the duty cycle. There's that relay for the ignition. The ammeter, it's got a heavy shunt because its range was, wasn't correct. I had to um, change the range of it calibrate it. Um, the back of the meter it's got a little um, circuit board, it's just an interface board somewhere to join the wires. Uh, I had a fuse coming in that was that'll be that fuse right there at the back um, yeah I think you get the idea this is the um, the main shunt. Here. Remembering this, this was outputting um, 80 amps or more at times. So it's a heavy duty shunt, and that's uh, the shunt that it was using. And I had um, the, the, the two wires coming off the shunt were were these two here. And really guys, that's about it. Um, not much magic to it. So I hope that answers your questions. I'll put some links in for um, the speed controller I used, um, how the alternator was modified to remove the, remove the voltage regulator. Um, all these videos are already kind of up already. Um, it's a matter of, um, you know, clicking on the on the channel and, and going through the videos you'll probably see them all what can I say about the why I wanted to have the frequency control um, to change the the um, pulses is I had an idea um, if you have a look at the video on the alternator output you'll see it's pretty much a square wave and it depends on the, the speed of the motor. You, you basically got like a, a six pole. That rotating um, field has like six, six north poles and six south poles, six pairs of poles. Um, you multiply the pairs of, number of pairs of poles by the um, RPM and um, you'll get the frequency. Like in our case we had um, say a thousand RPM which is uh, like 60,000 um, per second? No. 60 per second, sorry. Times six pairs of poles. We have there then um, 360. Now, that's the engine speed. The alternator is actually spinning faster because you've got a, the crank driving a small alternator pulley. Right, so it's about two and a half times normally. Um, the alternator speed's two and a half times faster than the crank speed. 
crankshaft speed. Um, yeah, so we hit at, at idle. We were, I think we were hitting. Um, I forget from memory. Was it like um, 250 hertz? And like 2,000 RPM was 500 hertz. So the idea of changing the frequency was to try and turn the the magnetic field on and off. Turn turn the rotor field mag magnetic field on and off in between each of these pulses. That's how I was, I was, I was hoping to like you see what I mean? Like this sort of a thing. Now I'm not sure that was successful or not. This this was to we're trying to we're trying to get frequencies of, uh, you know, I think at the time, ten thousand to, to thirty thousand sort of frequency range, and you, you're just not going to get it. Your, your engine would have to be doing like um, sixty thousand RPM. <laughs> so I was trying to achieve that by pulsing the 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 rotors. Um, the field on and off, on and off, on and off, in between, in, in between cycles, and I don't think it was successful. There's a couple of things come into play with magnetism and, and iron cores, is um, reluctance and um, hysteresis. Now you can go and Google those. Um, once once you got something magnetized it doesn't like it can't instantly switch off and it can't instantly switch back on this is a um, hysteresis and also when when it's turned back on it doesn't attain the the value it was at previously I think I ran into a, a wall of um, reluctance and hysteresis effects coming into effect that were stopping me from achieving this but look, that's a whole other story. Um, we have we have there the circuit of how it was wired up, and yeah, I hope it explains it for you guys that um, we're asking. Okay, cheers. Have a good day.